12,720 pounds. This is a fully loaded Montana 3120 RL rolling in here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And this is what happens when you go down the Montana order list and you check basically everything. This is intended to be Mr. Halet's demo, but he does always eventually let go of them. And obviously if we got this one, we can get one just like it for you. Naturally, a lot of folks are going to be wondering what does something like this cost out of curiosity, if nothing else, visit the link in the video description. If we have one on hand, it'll have pricing right there, or you're always welcome to contact our team. Now this is a very high level, highly equipped, highly involved RV. I'm going to basically run through this one as it is. Then I'm going to make separate videos describing the legacy package, the solar package, the extra options and features that make this one different from, I, I hesitate to say garden variety Montana 3120 because it's already such a beautiful coach, but this is something special. Quick look at her with the slide closed here. At a glance, like a lot of triple slide fifth wheels with an island, you walk up, you're like, oh look, I can see the reflection of my legs in the window there. And in my case, you're looking at chicken legs. But something Montana did really well, and they kind of tweaked this uh, sometime last year. They revised basically any floor plan they possibly could for full fridge freezer access in transit. So bed, uh, bathroom, refrigerator, sink, and to a lesser extent, dining all available in transit with the slides closed and with these lower slides being hydraulic you can get inside and set up camp real fast and easy or put her away real fast and easy and remember these slides have a flow control so if you want to open just one or the other slide you can do that Now this unit that we're looking at today has, as I've <laughs> clearly stated, all of the things. The um, thing is, most of the legacy stuff is outside stuff. Whether it's a legacy Montana or a standard series 3120 RL, this is basically what you'd see. Now you might have a different color chair option, and they do now offer the cottage white wood tone swap. Um, which I, I think Mr. Hale probably would have put in had it been available when this was first requested. Um, you know, these super loaded up jobs, they don't just pop off the assembly line every single day, obviously. But this part of the video will be very um, easy to translate from base to uh, standards or base to uh, legacy and paint series. So first thing is we have all carpetless flooring. And the, the stuff that's in the slide floor here, it's not carpet, it's actually kind of like the flooring that you'd find in a, uh, like a really nice pontoon boat, where it could get wet, you could really scrub on it if you had to, the stuff's really resilient, which makes sense because you're right during, you know, right in the line of fire of like an eating drinking space right there, whether it's the seat or the uh, uh, dinette. Um, this floor plan has uh, long been one of Mr. Halet's favorites for a few reasons. You have that, what I call, I think it's nerdism, what, number 37? Help me out here, guys. No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center parked on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place. You are staring straight at that TV. And the TV's actually on a double-jointed swing arm. I'm only using it at about half capacity right now. If you want to make it stick virtually straight out so you can even see it from the kitchen, or turn it halfway toward the rear sofa in theater seating for like a nice little conversation corner, you can do that too. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a lot to cover on this. Let me actually back up and look up top. First of all, we have a 12-volt uh, max air vent fan up here with rain sensor and wall controller. You'll find another of those in the bathroom. Awesome for exhausting cooking heat and just forcing good airflow. The little white nub that you see right there, that is basically where the TV antenna is located on the roof. And if you're interested, there is a wine guard, basically Wi-Fi range extender and signal access point that could be installed right there. So if you're gonna do some work camping, you want enhanced, uh, easier access to local data sources, that's a way to do it. And you see the indirect lighting above the crown molding. You'll see a bunch more indirect lighting like below countertop lines and in various areas of the coach as we go. It 
activates or allows for what I call stealth mode lighting, which if you've seen uh, our family camping video, where uh, I, we actually did a, a five-person family trip for a weekend in a 3120RL Montana, just like this, only it was a 2018. Um, we got along just fine, and at night, it was cool, because we could turn those little uh, runner lights on for like a night light, and we could watch a movie while my kiddo was setting, settling down after the s'mores sugar was finishing burning through her veins, you know? Um, and then in the morning, before we were ready to really crank up the lights and go outside, we could turn the, the stealth lights back on, I guess you could say, and enjoy just more pleasant experience. Now, once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Let me look back up top here. 12 volt ceiling fan. Historically, Montana's had 110 only fans. Now, on a super flex solar Montana like this one, it doesn't matter because it could basically run anything you wanted anyway. But thing that you're not seeing is the air conditioner. You will not see the air conditioner and it's harder to hear it both in the living room and the bedroom because this has standard dual whisper air systems. You have a 30,000 BTU system. Dual 15s is what that means in English. And our air back here has a 16,500 BTU heat pump on it. Combine that with the fact that we have a 5,120 BTU electric space heater that we call a fireplace down here. And you have yourself a ton of heating that doesn't burn propane. Plus, all Montanas, it, it, whether it's a high country or a full Montana, they all have 12 volt tank heating pads. Now this guy right here, if you notice, it is a wider tri, uh, tri-fold sleeper sofa. And uh, if we take a look, you can kind of see that in action right here. What's nice about that is I can speak from experience. Two adults can comfortably spend a weekend on that. And what we did is uh, because the uh, RV is large enough, the theater seat closest to us basically reclines nearly flat. And my little, uh, at the time, what, seven or eight year old thought that was great that she got to sleep in what she called grandpa's chair. And she slept on that all weekend. Wife and I slept on the hide bed in the back and we all got along just fine. Now, since that family camping trip, they have done something here that I really appreciate. They've added USB plugs to a bunch of areas. Both sides of this sofa on those side stands have USB plugs. Actually, those side stand tops are hardwood. They're, you know, they, they use nice materials throughout on these uh, full Montanas. Now, the windows. That is something that Mr. Halet loves about these. You can see that uh, they have dual section day and night shades. But as we look, they all open for airflow and you have like a huge collection of windows over here overlooking your campsite. Because if the windows are on the other side of the RV, then you stand a chance of looking at a guy like me in the campsite. Overweight, out of his prime, hairy belly. Nobody wants to see that when they're looking out the window of their RV. My wife doesn't even want to see that in her own home and I don't blame her, she's not wrong. But you get the idea, you get to enjoy your site, not the neighbors. This is a power reclining theater cinema seat with heat and massage functions as well as USB charging. And I love the cup holder inclusion in the center uh, console right there because I like to have a drink by me. I just, I, I consume a lot of fluids constantly. And the middle armrest does flip up for remote control storage. Super handy. Otherwise you're always dropping them somewhere around those theater seats. Our main level slides in all Montanas are going to be six and a half foot tall. So a big guy like me can walk in those and not clock his head, which is a very welcome thing. And then over here, this is one of the things that before we were a Montana dealer, Montana has always had some form of enhanced dining table. And I am so glad we're a Montana dealer so that I get to feature this instead of trying to find a way to sell against it. Because frankly, it's just too good. It's one of the best dining arrangements you're ever going to find in a towable RV. So first of all, most of the time, you don't need four chairs in a more couples-oriented RV. But if you do have a guest, there's two of these fold-away guest chairs that um, obviously you can see that they don't tend to fall over. They're not going to gouge up your woodwork, which is really nice. They store very neatly in uh, one of the uh, front closet spaces. I left the other one up front so that you get to see it. And what's nice is when those fold down, they don't feel like you're sitting your guest at like a kid's chair that you pulled out for your grandkids. You know, adult guests can come over and they can have a real chair padded back even. Obviously, you might have noticed that tabletop also extends to make a little bit more room for everybody. But if you're looking, you're thinking, yeah, that's still a little bit tight for four people. Well, Montana agrees. And the table actually has an additional extension leaf to pop out. So you truly have room for four adults sitting at this thing having a good time. And this right here is a little transitional secret in the sauce that you weren't seeing. The table first extends outward as we saw. Then there's a nice hydraulic strut to lift it up. When you do that, there's a little magnet catch here. All you do 
You just pull that lip down and you can drop the table down. To support that end, there are these handy little runners, one on each side to provide the support when you need it. And then when you're done, you see that you also have almost like a little desk space, which is why I tend to call it a destination dining desk. Now, we're still not done. This dining table does a lot of cool things. What's my favorite though, is what I call the chair buddy. I don't know if there's an official name for this thing, but they have this little strut and little T arm that comes down and it will hold these chairs, the two that are going to be out all the time for transit so that you don't necessarily have to strap them together. It wouldn't hurt. And actually when they ship it from the factory, they do strap them together. I just take that off for display purposes when it gets here. So once again, it basically only does everything, you know? And that's kind of what this coach is designed to do. This isn't designed to just do some things. With all of the options, it's going to do all of the things. Now, as we work our way around here, we start zeroing in on the kitchen. And this is the part of the Montana 3120 that my mother, Mrs. Haywood, absolutely loves. Uh, because it gives her, you see, three big chunks of prep space. Tons. Oh my gosh, so many outlets. Outlets on both sides of the island. That coffee bar over there is sized intentionally to fit a common Keurig coffee machine, which my parents love because they travel with one of those. When they travel though, they don't leave it on the counter, so kind of keep that in mind. They put a little plastic tote and stuff it somewhere so it doesn't bang around. And then over here, over the uh, you know oven stove symmetrical kitchen section, you see that there's a pair of pop-up power towers on either side of the stovetop giving us incredible storage, or pardon me, power outlet access in that space. And all of those power out, or pop-up power towers that you saw, one by the dining table and two over here, each have a pair of USB plugs. So there's, I mean, just no shortage of places to be able to plug in appliances, devices, basically all the things, guys. So one of the very few differences inside a Legacy Montana versus a standard series is that you do actually gain all hardwood cabinet styles, not just hardwood cabinet doors. So that's not like sticker wrap, that's actual like stained wood. Big convection microwave right there for us. Now that window does not open for ventilation, but it does provide some nice light, or we could always pull down a shade to block that. We already talked about the prep space, and I like how there's prep space on both sides of that oven. Great if you're left or right-handed. But as we start to come down below, you're going to start to see lots of drawers. It's got that new big suburban oven. Big space there for like larger pots, pans, or baking sheets. And even right below the oven, they never waste an opportunity to put a drawer or something like that in these Montanas. Uh, case in point, here's four more. And we're not even done yet. We have to take a look at the island that'll have more storage yet. But on the way... Before we get quite to there, I want to take a look here at like the kind of entry beer. I already talked about the coffee bar. If you're looking at a more standard series Montana, you won't have quite this many bells, whiz, uh, widgets, whiz bangs, all that good stuff. And this is a result of the uh, like super solar system, basically. It's your charge controller, your power command system, all those different kind of converter things that all kind of hang out right here even sort of showing you hey you know here's the kind of generator sort of system that we have going on and what's kind of cool when you get the super solar system it has a very motorhome style like battery disconnect plus there is a manual disconnect on the battery housing itself inside the exterior enclosure that we'll see but you know easier to access this way instead of having to reach your hand around things but you still have good upper cabinet space around here you have the rest of our normal command center uh, over here so most of the time Basically, you're not going to have to get in here for too much other than just initially activating your power. This is where you might be activating most things. And this has the most advanced version of in-command that's really available, uh, like a global connect, meaning you can, if the RV is hooked up to a Wi-Fi source, you can effectively like remote start and remotely operate a bunch of things on your RV. But you can raise and lower your hitch, and where that's really nice is when you're in the seat of that truck and you're backing up, you can grab your phone and you can raise and lower the nose of this thing so that it can get hitched up without having to jump in, jump out, have somebody out there. Simple, easier. You know, um, this has a button for generator and that's standard. When we get outside, you'll learn more how that doesn't apply to a super solar Montana. But this is amazing. And look at this. It has all the battery power in the world coming off those twin dragonflies. It's amazing. Fan controls, our Victron Energy battery monitor, all that stuff right in here. Now, below that, we've got kind of a neat little sort of entry barrel, and this is a cool space for keeping, like, 
almost if you're going to be a full timer, this is a cool place to have like your own, you know, like your postal supplies in a sense. But you'll find a different use for it. And then of course. You, you, you got a big RV, you need a big pantry, and what's cool is as you open the door and as you enter, it has a motion-activated light to get us inside of here and let us see around. And then, kind of like the refrigerator at your house, once you close the door, after a little bit of no motion, it'll go off. We assume. Except, with that being a glass door, you definitely know uh, that it does come off. Now, the sink arrangement here below that high-rise sprayer faucet is cool, because you have one big, giant farm sink, and then one, like, I don't know, call it like veggie prep sink. Here's a nice look at those right there. <laughs> Actually, uh, I've been, uh, a couple people have laughed, I've talked about in farm sink, calling it a baby sink because you could wash a baby in there. That I originally got that phrase from my mother. At the time, we had a, a newborn grandbaby in the family, and she was saying if the grandbaby came, she could give him a bath right there. So that's kind of where I got that. Now, down below the island, everything is wide open storage. You see you've got extra drawer there, so we're up to, what, five, six drawers? Here's number seven coming into view with a wastebasket built in right below. There's just not much they didn't think about here. Moving forward, you will see uh, below the uh, uh, steps to take us to the upper deck, we have our uh, central vac system. Now, there is the whole hoses and all this stuff you can string all over the RV if you want. But this RV also has one of my favorite features. I call it the electric dustpan. You can just kind of toe kick that guy up, and when you have 110 power activated in the RV through multiple methods, since this is a super solar Montana, basically, it's like a dustpan. It'll just suck everything right in the collection point right there, and you don't even have to get the dustpan out, because the dustpan always leaves a tiny line of garbage, doesn't it? Did you notice that little motion light right there? Very handy for a couple reasons. It's located by the door, so it will activate right when you walk in to avoid a light causing a collection of bugs by the door, which nobody wants to eat or let in your RV. Um, and secondly, if you're going up and down the steps around nighttime, it'll help you see safely. Handy little spot here to hang some coats as well. Moving upstairs past that handy grab handle, we come to the bathroom, and uh, you won't see where much here has changed. However, they have moved away from that Montana pivot door. They have gone back to a sliding door. It's funny, when the pivot door first came out, everyone thought it was great. After a couple years, nobody liked it. Sometimes things just have a, a way of that. I don't know. Um, remember, we've got our big pantry down here, but above that pantry, we have ourselves a nice chunk of linen space. And if you need to throw some little shelf units in there, you can. That light will turn off when you close that door, by the way. So uh, pretty handy there. Porcelain foot flush stool, of course, but... I mean, plenty of hip and shoulder room if you're a bigger person, you're a little, it's a fluffy, friendly bathroom, we'll say. Plenty of leg room for a long-legged guy like me. And then we've got this one-piece seamless fiberglass shower here with built-in kind of corner seat. So if you need to sit to bathe for comfort or, you know, injury reasons, or if, you know, shaved legs, something like that, you got a nice spot to do it. Height adjustable shower hardware is something uh, I would appreciate in my own home that I don't have. Because my wife and I, she won't let me say I'm a foot taller, so we say that I'm 11.9 feet, or uh, uh, yeah, inches taller. There we go. <laughs> Not feet. That would be very awkward, obviously. Up top, I mentioned earlier, but just to circle back, we do have another one of those nicer Max Air vent fans with um, wall controller, and it is rain sensoring. So if it happens to stick open and you guys walk away from the RV, you don't got to worry about everything getting all soaked. Now, I love what they do with their bathroom vanity because they just have this giant mirror on the wall right here. Very nice because it's sunken back since it's not a cabinet and it just makes the whole room look and feel much, much larger. But if I uh, step in here and uh, you know take a little step to the side, you see you do still have a medicine cabinet. And what's nice is it's very nicely sized. So if you have things like medication bottles and stuff you need to keep in there, plenty of room for it. Sealed edge press membrane counter here in the bathroom with a stainless inset sink is just yet another nice touch. A space for a wastebasket in the bathroom and a toilet paper holder I can actually reach. Also very nice touches. In case you hadn't noticed, Montana's just very good at the touches. And one, two, three, we've got drawers galore right here. Drawers down to the floors, as it were. Notice the thickness of these interior walls as well. That's something Keystone's very good about. They fully frame out and stud around all entry doors. And they do that in many of their RVs, like Cougars do the same thing. Remember, up here in this upper deck, this is a six and a half foot tall upper deck. I get that question all the time. Like, I'm 6'3", I can walk around these things, lickety split, no sweat. You're going to have to be very, very tall for it to be an issue. And remember, it's a recessed shower floor, so the bedroom height 
and the shower height are the same, except the shower also gets a skylight. Notice, remember, Whisper AC up here. That's something that uh, like Eagle, North Point, Montana, or uh, Pinnacle, and Jayco also do very well in the bedrooms. There's very few RVs that have really nailed that. There's a lot of RVs that want to call themselves luxury that don't use quieter air systems too. I kind of fail to understand the logic of that. Now, people want to know about CPAP readiness. And most brands will say, yeah, if you open that front closet, we got a power outlet there. You could string an extension cord all the way around. But look inside the slide walls of a Montana. Both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs. That is a very hard thing to do in a slide box. They've done it well. Both sides of the bed have nice breeze windows. You see that big viewing window above. And all the windows in the bedroom here do have a blackout kind of shade about them. 70 by 80 king bed is actually an optional piece of equipment, although you are very hard pressed to find a Montana nowadays that does not feature that. And then behind doors number two and three, we've got ourselves some, some more good news. More motion sense lighting in that closet, by the way, which is really, really nice so that, again, it's just on when you need it. You don't forget that it's there. On this RV, I don't know if you could even try to drain the batteries off a single light being left on, but you don't have to worry about it on any of those Montanas. On the left side, you see a handy clothes hamper for yesterday's clothes today, which is nice. Big shoe garage inside that closet, you might have noticed when I was peeking inside. There's the motion lights doing their thing. Now, the right-hand side, which is dead center of the frame currently, is either extra storage or, as you can see, a place to keep those fold-away guest chairs. Or, it is capable of accepting either combo or stackable washer-dryers. Montana's come standard with the bedroom TV up here, so you don't have to go around Best Buy or Amazon to try to get another screen. It's just all done and wired up for you. Um, that is actually even on a swing arm mount, so if you need to get it down, it's easier to, to access everything since it's kind of boxed in there, or to plug in like a Roku stick or something like that. Down below, also, breeze window, which is egress, meaning it tilts open for excellent airflow. Plus, you got those sliding bed cross breeze windows. You get good air up here, and an excellent uh, space for dresser storage. Also, across from that hardwood top dresser, I don't know if I mentioned this, but why talk about it when I can show you? We've already done all this work, right? There is a full underbed storage compartment down here. So if you got yourself some big totes or something like that, there's some serious space available there. And even the moment we step outside, you're just hit with lefts and rights and lefts and rights and all the different things that this RV has, starting with the door. It's not only 30 inches wide, it's six and a half foot tall. Notice how it's the same height as that six and a half foot tall slide out. Um, that means that it's a residential height door. So a person like me, I don't tend to clock my head walking in and out of this thing. Now if you're seven foot tall, chances are you're used to ducking regardless. Obviously you see the zero G more ride stable steps right there, holding themselves up over thin air like some kind of David Blaine magic trick. Nice thing about those, if you got like a, a rough shoulder or something like that, um, you know, you're not gonna, well, hurt yourself or it's not gonna like fall on you, fall on your pet. Take a look at the awnings, plural, because you have dual power awnings with LED lighting and both awnings have these handy little Dometic power channels. The RV actually comes with uh, one little kind of removable light that you can hook up to this awning arm right here because it already has good awning lighting, but sometimes you want a little bit extra lighting under the awning. So you get one of those lights with either, uh, well, both awning arms, so two total. Now. While we're looking down here, there's no real easy way for me to get to it, but uh, with the legacy package, so this is a legacy feature, you do get disc brakes. And I've talked to a lot of people who say, man, that legacy package is worth it just for the disc brakes alone. And in point of fact, the RV delivery driver that brought this to us, he goes, good God, I don't know what they're doing in Montana, but this thing's got brakes for days. Well, that's those disc brakes he just wasn't used to. He goes, I hit the brakes and I lurched for it in my chair. They, Man, they were they were tight. And I'm like, well, that's cool. Because with this being a 35-foot Montana, the smallest of the full Montanas, it's most likely to be a traveler. So having that extra stopping power for going down mountains is very, very preferable. Also, gas grill quick connect right here. That's a very easy to miss feature because there's already so many other things going on uh, on the door. Uh, and, you know... <laughs> You get you get overwhelmed, and it's under the skirt line. Now, when you get the super solar, because Montana has two solar packages, part of your pass-through compartment becomes occupied by all of the electronical stuff that goes into that, which is a technical term. But I love how it. I mean, 
Are you telling me, you know, you say, oh, I lost some storage. Yeah, but are you telling me that's not, there's tons of storage here. That's plenty still. Um, below the central vacuum system, you get this handy access panel right here. And inside, you can see all the different widgets and whiz-bangs that go into this. I will do more in-depth information on the Superflex solar package in a separate video. I'll try to link that in the video description so you can see it. But these two giant Dragonfly batteries that we see right here, in case you're not aware, that is the parent company to Battleborn. Those lithium phosphates right there, you can run the air conditioners, both of them, inside off of those. And Keystone actually had a lot of people test that, and they passed with flying colors. Another legacy feature, so much of the legacy package is actually outside of the RV, is the uh, not just backup camera, but also side view cameras, which is a really nice thing. Now, another thing you are probably likely immediately aware of is the Sterling full body paint package on this Montana here. So the full paint package is related to, but not necessarily uh, a part of, the Legacy Upgrade Bundle. We start with a Montana, which is amazing. They're the number one selling full-time RV since, for what, 17, 18 straight years now? It's silly, they're, they're the best at what they do, obviously. But then you add Legacy, which we're going through and learning about, and then you can add one of three paint packages of your choice. And the Sterling one I really like because it is so obviously different from the light beige exterior of a, a base Montana that you know immediately it's completely separate. Now what's funny is we kind of bingoed this and then Keystone figured out what we already uh, figured out. Um, normally with Legacy, you get generator prep. However, with the Superflex solar package, you've effectively eliminated the need for a generator. Additionally, through testing, Keystone found that there was just too much going on trying to get Superflex solar and generator all talking to one another in the same RV. So a Superflex Solar Montana does not, cannot have a factory installed generator. Now you still see the perforations in the uh, um, compartment right there where a generator would normally go because this is the same base chassis regardless of a Superflex Solar Montana or not. However, what's really, really cool here is without all that, look at all the storage space that we get in here. It's awesome. And down below, it's easy to miss. All Montanas have this, but you see how it's kind of muddy colored here and it's smooth colored there. That's because this has like a layer of diamond shield like the front of a motorhome to make sure that, uh, you know, rocks and things flung in transit are not going to ding and scratch up your beautiful legacy Montana. Now, no matter what, all Montanas have road armor, pin box, and suspension systems for smooth ride and handling, and they work well. This is the third 3120 Montana in a row that Mr. Halet is taking on as a personal demo. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I am in the industry what's called an SOB, which the sales guys tell me stands for son of the boss. I haven't really looked that up, but I'm taking their word for it. Why would they make that up, right? Anyway, so when I say Mr. Halet, I mean my dad, but that sounds very unprofessional. When I'm at work, he's Mr. Halet. My brother is other Mr. Halet, you know. Um, I, I've obviously known the guy for a long time is what I'm getting at. He's never had the same RV three times in a row. He's just really fallen in love with this thing. You see the slide awning option that we've applied here that's available on any Montana. Another thing that's really cool on this six point, um, well, it's got a six point hydraulic slide, uh, or good Lord, six point hydraulic automatic leveling. There we go. So it moves fast, it works well. But what's kind of cool here is right in the same compartment where you control the auto leveling is a flow control for the slides themselves. I mentioned that very early in the video, if you recall. So if I want to open just the door side or off door side slide, I can turn one or the other off. Where that's really handy is if you have low battery power, but with all the panels going on the roof of this thing, I don't believe you should ever, ever, ever have low battery power. I just don't believe it's really going to be possible. The uh, docking center in here, like all Montana's, fully enclosed, heated, insulated, protected. Montana is, has been, zero degree camp capable since 2005 and counting. They were doing it before anybody even really cared. But it's the little touches that will separate them. For instance, when I take a knee here, you see it actually comes with a tube for your sewer hose so that you don't have to mix that in with the rest of your cargo. And it's like Montana's just have so many of those detailed touches that separate them. Underbelly of, of course is not just enclosed and forced air heated. It not just has a radiant barrier, it also has actual insulation as well as 12 volt tank heaters. You can't really do much more to an RV than you see right here. 
Now, as we uh, stand up from there, another aspect of the Legacy package below that larger 10-gallon water heater is this. And I've, I struggle, like, it's a power cord reel. Like, it doesn't sound right. So it's a 12-volt ex power extension and retraction 50-amp cable reel, which is really cool because 50-amp cords, man, they're heavy. I mean, <laughs> they're really heavy. And I've heard people say, young man at your age, man, even at my age, I don't like lugging those around if I don't have to. That's a big chunk of copper. So it's nice that it's easily there and easily gone. And you never have too much cord hanging out of your RV. It's never coiled around getting tripped up on your campsite. Another legacy feature is the full rear cap instead of a rear wall, as is the case in a base standard Montana. Keep in mind there are specific floor plans such as the 3790 Montana that have that sliding rear tray. There is no cap that can fit that. So uh, there are certain models where the legacy package does not have a rear cap. Another legacy feature is the rear view camera, although we already kind of talked about that in conjunction with the side view cameras. Another thing here, this is a nice standard update. Um, this was really first made popular by the Eagle HT fifth wheels that we carry here at Halo RV from Jayco, but a 3,000 pound towing hitch with a 300 pound tongue limit and four-way wiring harness built on these standard. Those are all nice things. This does have uh, reverse travel lighting, which is really nice. If you shift in reverse, you got big, bright white lights to see what you're doing in that camera package. Um, and obviously, as we talked about inside, all the windows in the world over here on the campsite of the coach. And I feel like it's appropriate to call it a coach like a diesel pusher, not a camper. This is, this is not a camper. <laughs> And uh, a quick look at the slides before we hop upstairs, because even here, there's Keystone detail that a lot of people miss. And you'll find this on Cougars and other things from Keystone, but like right here, this bulb seal, notice how it's two-tone, like a uh, Tommy two-tone, anyway. Um, difference is this is not a one-hit wonder. So this is lighter on this side, so that if it gets exposed to sun, it's not going to leave a crummy foam streak down the side of your beautiful painted Montana. The kind of almost like hammered tin skin sidewalls of the slides allow a couple things. It really grips those slide seals to get them in and out. And if I pull that back, you can actually see there's another wiper seal in there, plus the interior bulb seal. There's always two points of contact with the seals and the slide when the slide's going. In or out and three when the slide is fully extended or retracted and then this is something i can't get to show up on camera but you can see in person water is going to wash down this sidewall like any rv when it hits here it's going to try to walk under the slide floor which if left exposed for a really long time we're talking 10 plus years could cause some slide floor degradation however if you take your fingernail you can feel right here there's a little groove and the reason they do that is that water will wash down the sidewall and water can't go up without help. So it tends to hit that groove, it beads, collects, and drops so that the water is always shunting away from your uh, RV's floor instead of getting directed toward it. And another thing you can't even see is let's say hypothetically water does get past all three of those seals. There's also still like an aluminum, almost like rain gutter built inside that slide wall to help shunt water down and out of the RV. There's like multiple, multiple layers of protections and contingencies in play here. And so there's the Montana Solar Flex system, which is one 265 watt panel and a bunch of widgets and whiz bangs I've talked about in previous videos. We can send you a link if you'd like. And then there is Super Solar Flex, which is four 265 watt panels and a ton of other equipment. Again, I will do a separate breakout video just on that topic. If I combined this and all those other separate videos into one giant thing, which I might do, I don't know. It will be, I don't know, probably close to an hour long. So, uh, but at the same time, I don't mind doing that just because uh, I, I think that people, you know, if you're gonna buy something like this, you wanna learn all about it. The only hiccup with all this, there's not a lot of room to walk up here. I mean, there's obviously plenty. You can see my footprints. I have been up here once already, just inspecting seals and things. But I mean, they, they flooded the roof with solar. It is awesome. And again, I have personally been in one of these. And the one that I was in was their uh, front bath and a half Montana with Legacy and Super Solar and all that with a residential fridge. They were running both air conditioners and a residential fridge all at the same time off the Superflex solar system. 
at the uh, Keystone Dealer Showcase last year. This RV was, uh, well, an RV like this, rather, was displayed with all those things running and never plugged into shore power. It ran all weekend. I mean, they just never had problems with it. Now, even on an overcast day like today, I couldn't even put a dent in the battery reserve. Unless you're going to start running things like microwaves and blow dryers, you will, you're, it's just not even possible to start to begin to deplete your battery reserves on this. It's like a gas tank that fills itself up. It's magic! <laughs> One other quick note. Up here, when you get a full body paint package on a Montana, it actually wraps over the top a little bit and it does paint this front termination uh, strip, which is organically a really good way to expand the, lifespan, expand the lifespan of that. Pardon me. I've done a lot of talking here, obviously. Now, you know, you can see the roof attic vents there. Like any Montana, I mean, it's hot, cold, can't prove, and you're well over 110 degrees capable in something like this. They are just they're monsters the montana is the monster that everybody else in the big fifth wheel market is chasing their success is unprecedented 17 going on 18 consecutive years as the number one at what they do no one else has come close to that it's remarkable so if you like what you see give us a call we do it all at halo rv whether you need hitching pieces parts trades or finance the only thing we don't do is hidden dealer fees so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping here, everyone. We're going to end with a little look at our final readiness check phase over there. And that's part of our no hidden fees thing. We make sure everything works. We don't have prep fees or readiness fees or anything like that. We just do it all without charging you extra. How about that? So what is the Montana Legacy Package? Well, first of all, you have a Montana High Country, which is the lighter weight. I kind of call it Traveler's Montana, a little more price sensitivity there. Then you have just Montana, the full big brother, full time living luxury Montana. Then on any big brother, full luxury Montana, you have the option of adding the legacy package. And wouldn't you know it, we happen to have Mr. Halet's legacy demo right here and available for you. Legacy is a series of seven, eight, I don't know, nine things or something like that that we're gonna go through that are, are it's a whole bundle of stuff. You can't pick and choose what you want, but typically I think, you know, if you want one, you're probably gonna want them all. First thing we're gonna hit on is disc brakes. You upgrade from traditional drum brakes to disc brakes, and the RV delivery driver who brought this thing to us goes, man, it's got braking for days, this thing. He was very impressed. And uh, if you're gonna be traveling with your Montana, the extra stopping power when something you know weighs, say, at least 12,000 pounds and up, you know, their triple side weighs 12,000 pounds, and then they go up from there, I think it's a feature you're gonna like. I've had a lot of people tell me, man, the Legacy Package, it's worth it for those disc brakes alone. Next, we have that full rear cap. And as opposed to just a conventional rear wall, it doesn't really enhance the function of the RV whatsoever. It just adds a beautiful aesthetic to it. Mounted on that cap, you will see the beginnings of the Furion full observation system that you'll get with the Legacy Package. It begins with that handy backup camera but it also includes side view cameras on your front side clearance lights, uh, basically. And uh, of course, you know, the associated handheld monitor to be able to see those things. And it gives you excellent, not just, uh, you know, it's handy when you're traveling, obviously, so that you can make, you know, lane changes of peace of mind and know that you're not gonna run over some guy in a Geo Metro or a Ford Fusion or whatever. But um, another thing here is campsite security. You can keep that monitor in your bedroom. You hear a funky sound at night. You can have a pretty good peek around your RV without ever even opening a window and alerting to someone, uh, alerting someone basically to your presence. Next, we have our 12 volt extension and retraction 50 amp cord reel, which is a welcome thing for a lot of people because those cord reels are heavy. There's a lot of copper in there and making it push button simple like that is a very welcome thing. Notice right there, it actually has a, like, uh, a little tension sensor to make sure you're not over retracting your power cord. Smart. One of the other generally unsung aspects of the legacy package that I, I, I think more people actually benefit from than realize is the surge protection that comes with it. Legacy package integrates a surge guard into the RV so that your expensive appliances like your air conditioner, microwave, TV, or electric space heating fireplace are protected without the need or expense of third-party add-on accessories. Legacy Package Montanas also include generator prep, which is kind of handy. However, this is a good example of uh, how it's not necessarily compatible with all other options. Sometimes in an RV, option A prevents option B from being applied. 
the uh, super solar system available on Montana's is not compatible with generators. So even in the case of a legacy Montana, like this one, you see that there is no generator prep here because this one happens to be included with the super solar system. The good news, if you got super solar, you don't need a generator. And finally, Legacy Montanas include the InCommand 3 system with Global Connect. Basically, this is the most advanced version of InCommand available. It can operate your generators, it can operate your hitch height, your heating and cooling. Basically, anything you can do on this, you can also do on your phone. And that's the Global Connect part. If the RV is hooked up to like a, uh, you know, internet access point, well then, Effectively, you can remote log into your RV and operate that remotely on your smartphone. Now, one other note on the Legacy package. Previously, in a Montana, when you added the Legacy package, you upgraded the cabinet styles from a lumber core with a wrap to a hardwood stained cabinet door. The hardwood stained cabinetry is actually now standard. I think I actually explained that incorrectly when I did the full video tour of this very RV. So keep in mind what I just shared right there. All full Montanas, legacy or not, always have the uh, full hardwood cabinet styles now. If you have any other questions on any of this, please do not hesitate to give our team here at Haywood RV a call. If we don't know the answers offhand, we know the people that do. We are more than happy to dig into that for you. So as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Haywood camping, everyone. So I don't know if you folks heard, but it turns out this camping thing is kind of popular. And uh, maybe we're aware of that at Halo RV, which is why you see why we have so many opportunities out here. But the thing is, as camping has grown in popularity to the extent that I've now recently called it America's new pastime, which I think is a great descriptor, getting into a campground and finding vacancies has become difficult. More and more people are going off the grid. And that is where the Montana Super Solar System comes into play. It is a series of things designed to be able to make even a giant luxury fifth wheel like this be fully functional, completely untethered and off the grid. In a sense, you can cut the cord, although I, I wouldn't do that literally. It begins with four raised panel, high efficiency, 265 watt panels. Now Montana makes two solar systems. I've done a separate video on the uh, base package, which is a single 265 watt panel. This is for those. This is 1,000 60 watts of solar power flooding the roof of this thing. Now, also, when you get the super solar package, our air conditioners are passively, silently upgraded. A lot of people don't realize that. We always have dual 15,000 BTU air units. However, we do go to the super solar system. You gain uh, the power saver systems with a soft start on them. So, when you are off grid, you can run both airs at the same time and you can do that on a 30 amp setup, which is a really cool thing. And notice how our roof membrane and the air conditioners themselves are white. That will help keep everything cooler and running better. Now, when you go with the super solar system, it takes a lot of hardware to run this beast. And that does occupy a bit of that uh, pass-through compartment. But, ladies and gentlemen, I do maintain, I believe you still have plenty left. And they give you a nice little visible access point here, which just looks, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what half this stuff is. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still learning solar. I'm doing my best. I know enough to get myself in trouble, but woo, this is serious solar. This is way beyond me right here. What it begins with is a pair of these uh, Dragonfly batteries. I believe they're, what is it, lithium phosphate, something like that. Um, in case you're ever curious about another portion, the Montana Surge Guard, that's that little thing right there This is warning high current on it. And that'll be found out as part of the legacy package. But we're talking about uh, super solar right now. In case you're not familiar with Dragonfly Energy, that's the parent company to Battleborn. Everybody here is all about Battleborn batteries and their mods, they're awesome. We're a Battleborn dealer here at Halo RV, we can get them for you. But in a sense, this is their father. And this thing gives you uh, a total of 500 amp hours, which <laughs> is a lot. Not to mention you have that 1060 whatever watts of solar pumping into this thing all the time. Now over here, we have a 3000 watt hybrid inverter with basically it allows for every single electrical outlet in this RV to be inverted. So in a lot of RV inverter systems, I'll say, guys, it's really cool because there's one outlet in the bedroom that works on, uh, on inverter and there's one in the kitchen and the TV works. How about every single outlet in this entire RV? Even these, even out here, 
you can run every single outlet in this thing. So I don't care if you're a CPAP user, a, a computer user, whatever it is, you can do anything and everything you want off of this guy right here. And when you get yourself a Super Solar Montana, you're going to find a cabinet that has a bunch of stuff like this in it somewhere. Well, what are these things? We're going to start with the uh, MPPT controller. This is That means maximum power point technology. This is our charge controller, making sure that it, basically those panels on the roof are always providing the maximum amount of power possibly available. Now down below here, you see from precision circuits, basically this is a battery protector. This is making sure that the batteries do not get overloaded. Um, that's obviously an important thing. And this right here from Magnum Energy, this is our um, uh, inverter controller basically so that you can choose how you want everything to run, shore power, and, and these are actually compatible with different batteries, although with the Super Solar having the pair of Dragonflies, you're not going to have to worry too much about it. One other thing that's really kind of cool here is very much like a motorhome, when you get the Super Solar system, you have a single handy battery disconnect switch, and it's very simple. It says use and it says store. And just like a diesel pusher, when it's time to power down, it's just one click away. And then you're never depleting your batteries. But what's cool, you are still charging them because the solar panels are wired directly to the batteries.